So this is, I think, if I may say so, a shared problem. It's a shared problem. We, as the government, need to ensure that our policies, that our laws, that our agencies are focused on preventing the radicalisation of young men and also of keeping the community safe. But this is a particular threat to your community because you're the victim of these predators. Well, George, I'm, just going, to, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you there and we will, as you say, come back to the details yes. of the laws. We've got plenty of questions on that, but I want to just go back to uh, Sheikh Wasim and I want to ask you, what are you hearing? Um, what is it that's got you so worried? Well, at the moment, everybody's been tarnished with the one brush. And the reality is, it's not like Muslims are lining up in their masses to become, uh, to become radicalised. I mean, I work with Muslims every single day, with the youth every single day, and I can tell you that the problems do not revolve around radicalisation. And so at the end of the day, what we've, what we've sort of framed is this narrative that you have young Muslim angry men, young Muslim angry men ready to tear down Australian values, and that's just not the case. I mean, that is very fallacious, uh, to, say the, to, to say the least. And, and there is a, a, a divide that's occurring um, a sense of distrust, and there's, there are legitimate grievances distrust that people in have. What, actually? Well, there's a distrust. I mean, there's this. You know, when when the prime minister came out and he said, you know, we're abandoning the Section 18C to get goodwill with the Muslims, it felt extremely targeted, extremely targeted, as though there was this them and us type of mentality. And this is very important because they they have in their minds legitimate grievances, and these aren't being addressed. I mean, Keith Sutter was one person who said, we can't just have this mindset where we keep legislating and isolating a community to feel more isolated and besieged and disenfranchised. And we need to start thinking outside the square. OK, briefly, I'm going to bring the minister back in. But the, the Team Australia rhetoric, how has that been, um, well, well the perception, been received? The perception in the community, and, I, and, and I, that's all I can report on, the perception in the community, it was highly divisive, extremely highly divisive, that it, ret it was rhetoric that shouldn't have been used because the team is such that, you know, you can, if you don't work with the team, you can be kicked off the team. And it creates this them and us type of mentality. And so they already have a lot to deal with, uh, let alone their, their issues uh, not being addressed, uh, then to uh, announce this Team Australia, which sounds very, it's just sort of framing up this issue in terms of uh, that narrative or that storyline that everybody fits into this, into this picture. And that shift needs to change. Let's go back to George Mandis. Well, was that a mistake well, in Australia? Well, look, I'll come to that, Tony. But look, Sheikh Wasim, um, I have said in all the speeches I've given about this, for example, the speech I gave to the National Press Club at the beginning of last month, the worst mistake we could make is to demonise our Muslim fellow citizens because you are not the problem, you are the solution. You are not the problem, but you're the solution, but you're also, or your community is also the victim. Because those small number of people who move in this community and recruit young men to be fighters in foreign wars in, in northern Iraq and Syria are a threat to your community. And I'm sure, I, I've no doubt at all, that you devote your professional life to trying to bring out the best in that community and encourage and nurture the young men and young women in your care. What the government is trying to do is to protect the same community that you are nurturing through your pastoral work by protecting them from the predators who prey on them.